Thank you. Um, quick thing before we get started, you know, it's a typing game, and I want all of you in chat to try to play along too. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to check the VOD afterwards, and I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be a scrolling mess. For the okay. next <laughs> half hour, I want yeah. things to be indecipherable yeah. in that chat. Yeah. Okay, so we do have a pretty tight estimate, so let's get going. Uh, three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so this is Typing of the Dead. This is like a, a I guess, a reimagining of uh, the House of the Dead 2. And instead of using our light gun to shoot zombies, we're going to be using our keyboards to type the words that are on their chests. It's very important to realize, by the way, this is literal, not figurative. Yes, as you'll see in a cutscene coming up here, we have Dreamcasts on our backs, a giant battery powering that Dreamcast, and keyboards slung by suspenders, and we are typing our way every single zombie that comes our way. Most of every single one. Most There's of every, yeah, some, yeah. Most of every single one. So Typing of the Dead, one of the big things you're about to see here is managing the NPCs that you are saving or leaving to, you know, die. Um, Keeping that management is very crucial in this run. It is one of the major, major, major routing uh, decisions that you make, and most of the tech is learning the run through what's the fastest way to get through each of these levels. There are a lot of branching paths, there are a lot of twists and turns, and so, for example, this guy right here, we let that zombie give him a swift kick in the butt, and uh, he doesn't stand up and say, thank you. And uh, it's very crucial. It saves a lot of time. Those thank yous, <laughs> they really, they really, really will tear away at your time. Yeah, so if you're ever in a zombie apocalypse, just don't say thanks to anyone. Unnecessary. More likely to make it's it implied. Up. Yeah, so we're coming up on the first mission here. Uh, what's going to happen here is like waves of zombies will come out. You're supposed to destroy all of them, but we're just going to let one walk up and hit me. This is going to speed up the run in a couple different ways. Notably, it's going to end the mission, so 24 seconds of typing are just going to you know, go down the drain. It's also going to lower the difficulty somewhat, and um, I'm going to let uh, Go to Quest to explain a little bit about that. Yeah. Ranked difficulty is very important to this run. This is an arcade game. It started in the arcades in 1999. And as you know, in arcade games, if you start to play really well, it starts to feel like the game gets harder. That is not just in your head. The game does get harder. Certain games, a lot of shooting games, a lot of shoot 'em ups have this system. And Typing of the Dead is one of them. The better you play, the longer the strings of words are. And so careful manipulation of both lives as well as credits which you can see we have five in the bottom, and those will reset as we go on. But keeping those down and keeping that sweet spot of difficulty will make things a lot smoother and a lot quicker. As a primary example right here, this is the first boss. This is Carl and Zeal. We got the Batman in the back and his big suit of armor in the front. This is the first time you're going to see longer strings of words. You're going to get three word phrases, four word phrases, two word phrases, um, we've been doing a good job with that hit right before this fight. Uh, one of the most straightforward fights in the game. This is tutorializing a boss battle. You have the life bar at the top and a big ol' enemy coming at you. This will be one more. Geriatric care. We're gonna be going into the second phase of this fight. Second phase of this fight is uh, looking at the clock, literally. We will get a three second countdown on Zeal, and then he will rush right at you. It's pretty straightforward. This is a pretty good time for one or two quick donations. Absolutely. We have a $250 donation from Tea Party Cthulhu saying, hey, Peaches, glad to see typing back at a GDQ, and even more glad it's not me. Ooh, this game is stressful. <laughs> Thank you for being an inspiration to all runners of this game, myself included. Good luck and suffer like G did. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off right here. Perfect. This NPC is crucial. This second chapter, this first guy, even though he gives you the big long thank you for rescuing me, if you did not save him, that car would spin out, crash, explode into a big blaze of glory, and would change the entire route of this level. Getting that yo right at the beginning is huge for uh, keeping pace on this run. Going into this fight, you have this guy, he's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're gonna have to hit him multiple times and you'll see that that happens quite a bit as the game goes on. Some of these zombies take a little bit longer than one hit. We do have a mission coming up again. This was pretty RNG dependent, so I'm getting hit really early. Yeah. 24 is a really good time there. Uh, if you get a bad pattern, you get hit more around the 19 second mark. So it's like a five second spread just on RNG of the pattern. Yeah, it's great. Um, one of the major questions that people ask about Typing of the Dead is, are the words the same every time? And 
Absolutely not. Not even close. Uh, there is a word bank. If you just count the three letters and up and then phrases, about 14,500 unique strings. So every time you play the game, it is very dynamic. It is different every time. And it makes for a very, very fun run because every time you play it, you're seeing new stuff. Peaches, I'm sure you see new stuff. Oh, for sure. Run. Yeah. Uh, you know, eventually you'll see some duplicates just because we're trying to manipulate the difficulty into a certain band. Right. So, yeah, eventually there will be some duplicates, but I, I still see new stuff every single run. I want to sure. pay quick attention to that key right there. He just very deliberately did not pick that up. Do not take that key. Maybe you at home, you should take that key. It's probably a really cool route, but it does not help beat this game as fast as possible. What does, we got these four leeches right here. Peach just had his keys, his fingers ready on those keys that W-U-D-W, -W, I forget what it was, whatever. That first hit is random, so all of those keys were primed and ready to go. As soon as that first leech, with everyone, whichever one it was, jumps up, we smash the rest of them out. We get that quick hit, which brings that difficulty down, but uh, keeps things moving right along. Okay, we're Cheater. coming up on kind of a rapid fire section of zombies coming out right here. Uh, normally, uh, you'll kind of have to like scroll the screen a bit to get a new set of zombies. Here, you just keep on typing them and new ones replace them. Yeah, it's a revolving door clown car of zombies <laughs> coming up here on the left. There's going to be a bunch of them coming out of this door on the left. These are probably the longest IQ 1300. Um, it, it, it gets pretty wild. <clears throat> pretty important girl to let die here, unfortunately. Uh, she just says thank you for way too long. Yeah. Very, very verbose. Okay, gonna be, go ahead. We're going to be pulled into the water here. There are a couple of really nice opportunities for some quick damage, make things easy, and also a pretty crucial NPC that we do not want to save, unfortunately. Again, just a very long wind-up on that thank you. So you may not even see him. Uh, I don't think he reveals himself. Oh, for just a moment, don't hit it. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, that was really, really good timing on that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're coming up on the first uh, continue of the run, uh, at least um, the first kind of like really optional one. Sure. So there's going to be two chainsaw guys, and I'm going to look at this one, and yeah, that seems pretty, pretty quick easy. Pipe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's another one that'll hit you about as quickly, and I, I try to make kind of a, I don't know, a call on the fly of like, which one's going to take longer to type. So we're going to use a continue on this. That's going to uh, lower the difficulty going into this next boss. And he's got, a, like, I guess a gimmick, if you want to call it that, um, that's actually a little bit more interesting than just typing the word straight up. Yeah. So his chest can either be open or shut, and I can only type when his chest is open. So I'm going to be locked in on this. Right. This is a pretty obvious parallel to it comes from House of the Dead. You can assume in House of the Dead with a light gun, you can only shoot the exposed heart when the chest is open. In this, as you can see, you get that moment of gray text before it goes full, uh, full color and you're able to start typing. If you take that continue right before, not only are the phrases shorter, but the amount of time you have is longer. And so you can really get, I think you got the first cycle on every single one of those. I did, yeah. Which is uh, really, really, really good. Makes a huge difference, because if you're waiting around for just, you know, one or two letters, it can really... <laughs> it's, it uh, adds up. It adds up, and it also it's a morale killer, let me tell you. <laughs> it's uh, Second phase, super, super, super straightforward. Jumps in the air, comes on down, trident in hand. Blast him down. We're going to uh, Alt F2 immediately, which brings us back to the main menu, skips the uh, results screen. Yeah, and that's that's like a new route development that's really kind of like shortened the runtime uh, by about like five minutes. Uh, runs from back in the day. Uh, had to look at all those score tally screens and uh, it just really adds up. It's really considerable. Yeah. There is one, there are two sequences in this run. One of them's right here. We, that was huge, 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 huge. Peaches had to make sure got the guy in the back first. This NPC right here says, thanks, I'll open the water gate for you. The water gate is not in this level. You will see the results screen of this game at the end of this stage because the water gate dictates your starting point on the next level. This guy pays out dividends on the next stage. So even though he gives this long thank you, it is one of the biggest time saves of the entire run. 
We're going into uh, a part of this level where there's going to be a bunch of like kind of free hits to take, uh, a bunch of enemy, uh, enemies kind of like throwing barrels at us. Um, I will say that this is probably a pretty good time to get a few more donations in. All right, we have a $25 donation from a mem cake who says, I'm in the crowd right now and smiling so much. This was a game that was special in my childhood as it was one of the introductions I had to gaming through my uncle who adored it too. Thank you so much from me and him. Beautiful. Uh, oh, go ahead. Okay, and uh, we have a $50 donation from Alara that says, Hey, Peaches, good luck. Good luck on the run. And say hi to Ledge Cat and Boat Guy for me. <laughs> we just saw Boat Guy. Yeah, we sure did. Going right there, right, there were two options for items that we could have taken. Taking the one on the right gives a Tranquilizer. A Tranquilizer is one of the multiple items in the game. We only use a few of them in this run. The Tranquilizer is one of the most important. It operates fairly similar to losing a life. The, it drops, it, call, it says that it weakens the zombies, which will make those strings of words shorter just to make everything a little bit quicker. Okay, we're gonna let this guy get hit. Um, it speeds things up just a little bit, so. Eh, um, but we're going to this next boss. One of my favorite guys right here getting dragged. Just get, <laughs> a, get goofball guy, I don't know. Um, but this is uh, the tower or hydra fight. Um, he's gonna ask a question and we have to answer it correctly before we uh, run out of time and get hit. These questions are, I don't want to say that they're gotcha questions, but there are some gotcha answers. There are quite a few, there's actually an individual pool of, nice, individual pool of answers for each, and some of them are just intentionally misleading. Uh, I don't know if we'll see it here. The one that always comes to mind for me is, there's a question that is, what is Christmassy? And, uh, one of them says three Ys, and your brain auto-completes three wise men. And you go, that's the one. You type it out, and it's three wise guys, and the Hydra gets a free hit on you, and Santa Claus is right next to it, just waiting as the correct answer. Um, so you really have to stay on your toes. Going into the second phase, a lot more straightforward. Like the second phase of the last boss, this is just one head of the Hydra swims around in the sand and jumps up and gets a quick hit. You, have, you really have to be on your toes here. Yeah, we do have time for a couple more donations going to the next level. All right, we have a $25 donation from Ian that says, big ups to peaches. Love you, Goaty. I want to see the phrase sucking ham palace and a bird. <laughs> Shout out to the Blossom Buddies, the extended Ricky verse, and that one zombie in a car. Oh, spoiler alert. Wow. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we have... Shout out. And we have a $15 donation from Zekier that says, good luck on typing in the dead peaches. Shout out from the P chord. Let's get a bungee sweep. Yo, thank you, Zekier. Nice. Um, as you saw, that was the, the stage results screen. Again, very crucial to see that. Even though it seemed like it was a very long and belabored score results process, being able to start this stage on this opening as opposed to picking it from the main menu saves a very considerable amount of time and makes this the second shortest stage aside from the very first one. It is, uh, it's very crucial to save that guy in the boat as well as... That was that a long word for that guy. <laughs> right That's a long there. word for the vent. Right there. That guy in the vent, even though he didn't really look too thankful to be saved, he kind of just, you know shambled off. Uh, he has no idea how important he was. If we did not save him, the on rails would jump down that hole to go after him and adds like a good minute plus onto this run. So saving that guy, and it's always very close, and ammonia. <laughs> that's, that's like the longest word It's one of the longest, had, right? yeah, yeah, truly. It's usually like, wow. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, having that is... Uh, Wow, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> they tried great, to get me. great that you got it. Uh, I do want to just pay quick attention to the upper left-hand corner of the screen. You may be wondering, there's a green bar that is slowly growing, and it has been persistently growing throughout the past two stages. That grows with every perfect string that you enter without a single typo. Now, if you're playing this casually, playing this on your own, it's really nice to get that because once it fills up, you get an extra life. For us here, it kind of does a little bit more harm than good, because remember, difficulty management is crucial. Managing those lives, managing those continues. So keeping it low and giving some intentional or unintentional typos is actually a good thing here. 
I'll let you talk about this, boss. Well, uh, okay, yeah, we're, we're starting <laughs> off on strength, the fourth the fourth boss, and uh, he's really fun. Uh, he tells these three little stories that have four passages each, and there's a uh, there's a really huge pool of these, like yeah. hundreds, I swear. Yeah. Uh, and so I'll, I'll it, pick up after the first yeah. one so you can focus sure, on yeah. it. Sure, <laughs> um, yeah. So given this very, very large pool, it's usually, you see, you get two lines at a time. The fourth line is the punch line. Um, following some of these jokes, some of them are really clever, really witty. I found an interview with the director of this game, Masamitsu Shino, who directly quoted uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus as an inspiration. Just the kind of delicate balance of anybody can laugh at it, but adults will get more out of it. Just kind of you know, clever without being too crass, without being too rude. Uh, it's got this perfect balance, and you can just see throughout the entire game that humor just plays a huge tone, a uh, huge part here. So we're going into the fifth stage. This is, we used our last F2 of the run. Going into the final stage, we will be seeing the results screen again, and so credit and health management is crucial. We are also introduced to the, uh, if you're familiar with the Call of Duty 4 martyrdom perk, the zombies pick up a martyrdom perk. Uh, you can take out a zombie and they will have a little leech that chest bursts and uh, that's some free hits. That item box that Peach has just picked up is a 50-50 shot. 50% 50 of the time it is a life up, which is nice. It gives a little safety net, especially going into these final stages of the game where we really have to be very careful with our continues and our credits. The other 50% is a genre dictionary. It is a bit of a shame we didn't see the genre dictionary this run because it's a lot of fun. What it will do is this entire string of the game in this, you know, lobby here is all going to be words from the same theme, whether it's all berries, so strawberry, blueberry, mulberry, or dishes at a restaurant, or rhyming words. It, uh, it really not only is fun, but it keeps the runs down because usually those genre dictionaries are much shorter than the actual strings in a chapter this late. Yeah, we are getting into a boss refight here against Judgment, AKA Carl and Zeal. And uh, th these guys are like exactly the same. So this is actually a pretty good stretch of, you know, time for a couple donations. Absolutely, we have a $20 donation from Caboose009 that says, happy to be watching again with my wife on my birthday. Happy, May, birthday. happy birthday. May RNG be, uh, be in your favor and your fingers type swiftly from Japan. Thank you so much for that. We have a $25 donation from Left Handed Heather saying, hype for type, ing of the dead. We have a $10 donation from Koromar that just says, canned beans. Did you, Koromar? And a $50 donation from Donkey Plays Games that says, excited for typing of the dead. Good luck to the runner. We need a few more. All right, we have, uh, we have some love for the couch here. We have a $25 donation from Ivy Melinda that says, when the quest is goaded. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. And we have another $100 donation from Susie McBoozy that says, truly goaded couch commentary. Oh, stop. <laughs> Thanks, Ivy. Thanks, Susie. Okay, so with, uh, with Judgment Dead, uh, we're going to get back on the road. Really important zombie coming Very up Very important. This the most guy here, important. He's just driving the car. You don't even kill him, and he just drives into the wall. I, I love that guy. I can't get enough of him. He, he died doing what he loved? Yeah. Driving. There goes our hero. <laughs> <laughs> we're going into another refight here. Again, you saw if he just took that quick hit from the zombie on the hood of that car, because going into this fight, it's the exact same thing. You want the extra time with the chest open and the shorter phrases so that we can get that first cycle for each of them. And we nailed that one. Nice. It was close. Nice, nice. It was close, but we got it. We got it. We'll count those. We'll count those. Um, again, exact same situation in the phase two. Jumps up in the air, comes swinging down with the trident, and uh, a quick blast takes it out. Um, Another thing from that interview with Masamitsu Shino that I was really surprised to see, uh, in 1999, early 1999, there was a Fist of the North Star typing game. And that really served as the entire impetus for this Typing of the Dead project because it was built as an edutainment game for early teens in Japan. And a guy at Sega saw it and said, there's actually something really fun here in a game. Sega should really take this opportunity and uh, 
early 1999, the Fist of the North Star game came out. This came out by the end of 1999. So this was a sub one year development cycle in full. And with a word bank this big, with uh, everything that goes on in this run and all the little goofiness, it's, uh, and to get the hardware out, because it was an arcade game, pretty crazy. Yeah, super impressive. I couldn't believe it when I heard that. Yeah. Um, we're getting this next boss here, and this is a pretty important boss. Uh, this enemy's gimmick is that if you make a typo past the first letter, you'll just instantly fail the word and take damage. This is the one time where accuracy is huge. So I'm going to be counting out loud just so that we can make sure we have each of the hits planned out. Um, we're going to need 11 of them. So that's one, two, three, four. One hit's OK. That's OK. That's OK. I get one freebie. Yeah. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, now I take a hit on purpose, and after the continue, that will hit him as I consume the continue. So that'll end phase one, and not only does it end phase one by typing his 12th HP instantly, now I get shorter words here. Right, and the pressure's off now. We can all exhale. Typos There's, are fine. For the, for the rest of the game, it doesn't matter. Make as many typos as you'd like. If anything, it's actually kind of good, because I want to keep my combo meter low to have more control over my life count. Totally, totally. This second phase, you will get three individual words and then one longer phrase. The damage ticks on the longer phrase. So you have to get the three words and then the longer phrase in succession in order to actually uh, qualify for the damage. Now, one question that I had had um, with this game as I was learning it, do the ranks matter for the boss fights? Does it matter if you get a rank A, B, C, etc.? For the sake of boss damage, no, it is completely static. The ranking system plays in on the scores at the end, which plays into life at the end. And so for a speed run, it's completely irrelevant. And uh, we could do a few donations here. Um, we're going to be going into another results screen, so we'll have a lot of downtime in between. All right. Cool. This is a, this is a great one. This is $100, $100 from Ben. Gonna have to catch the VOD later since I'm at work, but I had to donate while my pal Goated Quest was on the couch. Hopefully, AGDQ and the Prevent Cancer Foundation can put me out of a job someday <laughs> since I work in an oncology ICU, but sending love and support from the West Coast. Thank you so much, Ben. We also have a $10 donation from Exotic Chaotic that says, Peaches is the man. Love watching his runs. Good luck to him. Enjoy the wacky sentences. Thank you, Exotic. We also have a $5 donation from Sumo that says, loving all the runs and the, and the night owl energy. Hey, I'm a night owl. I, I was saying earlier, it's like I usually am still up in my day-to-day -day life at this time, so this is all right. Uh, this is the beginning of the sixth and final stage. As you can see, we got two credits left. We got four lives. Um, working through this and being very, very, very careful with life management is uh, crucial going into the end of the game here. And you're going to see, in my opinion, one of the coolest enemies of the game coming up here as we approach the elevator you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. I'll give you a little bit more. Once Peaches gets through these, these two little knife guys. Yeah, these guys don't quit. Yeah. <laughs> this guy in the elevator, I would, I would call a mini-boss. And we're about to see he can have the longest string of text in the entire game. Some of his strings of text are even longer than the, like, an individual strength sequence, the chainsaw guy from a couple of stages ago. He, uh, it's, it's crazy how many, how long they can wind up being. And he's tough. And he's tough. He'll hit you pretty quick. You have to be very, have very fast fingers, as clearly, clearly Peaches does. I mean, it's going crazy over here. We are going to go into another mission here. And with another mission um, from here up until, I think we get maybe two or three additional short ones, short donations, and then we'll go right into the next little phase. All right, we have a $50 donation from Zephyr316 that just says, someone tell Peaches to feed Reggie. <laughs> thank you, Zyphir. <laughs> I don't know if Reggie's listening to that, but thank you, Zyphir. 
Uh, we have a $25 donation from Daydream Records that says, I spent hours playing this at an anime convention. My friends couldn't find me for hours. Who knew typing could be so stressful? So happy this is being run. Thank you, Peaches. Thank you, Night Crew. Great commentary as well. That's a great item to get there. Um, as I said, the tranquilizer earlier, that one's not always a tranquilizer. Usually it is. I think that the, the odds of it being a tranquilizer are higher than some of the other boxes that we had seen earlier. But we're going back into everybody's favorite boss, the Hydra, with a few more questions here right before the finish line. Um, and again, the, uh, the tranquilizer will help with keeping some of these answers a little bit shorter and being able to Oh, process that, wow. that was unbelievable. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Being able to process all of it in the mo yep. moment. There's no phase two in this fight. This is just going to be the questions. And as soon as the questions are done, we're going to go right into the true final stretch. They almost got me with the French toad. Almost. <laughs> Bronchitis. <laughs> Which is a dinosaur? Bronchitis. Uh. Oh. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Good Some save. of them have beards, but yeah. yeah. Good Almost save. Got Great save. <laughs> now this is the final little stretch of the game. If there are any donations before we get into the final boss, because the final boss is going to be, you know, the main event, now would be a great time. All right. Uh, we have a $25 donation from Headlamp that just says, let's rock Donnelly. Uh, we have a $25 donation from Willis that says, love the commentary. I love the run, too. Come on. <laughs> And uh, we have a $10 donation from Sage that says, shout out to Go to Quest, great run, great commentary. Where, where, where's, I, where's the stuff for Peaches? Yeah, Come on. I know. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> All right, we're coming in the last mission here. So we're just going to take one last hit uh, before we get into the final, uh, the final elevator ride. We didn't get to mention it earlier, by the way, that in yeah. one of the previous missions, Peach has actually killed one of the zombies in it. And that's because there's a bug in the game that if you just let the zombie kill you right away, the game can hard lock. Yeah. And it's very common. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, if it hard locks, obviously, in a, in a run like this, you know, you really don't want it. Um, you could restart the game, but, you know, it'd be bad. There are a couple, I think that's really the main instance of any sort of hard lock that can affect this run. Yeah. Um, here on the final boss, this is not a hard lock, but this is also very, 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 very crucial for the run. This, everyone, is the final boss of Typing of the Dead. The first phase of this boss with the Knights into Dreams head has three different unique attacks. You have this sword, which is going to be a long string of text that comes at you pretty quick. And this is where Peaches is really flexing that WPM. We have another phase here that are three individual uh, energy balls that come at you that you have to hit them sequentially. And we're getting all three. They're giving us the full treatment. Got it. Without oh, a doubt, the hardest one. The four one, ball one is really tough. Four individual balls at the same time that you have to process and knock out all at the same time. Uh, that's the easiest hit that you can get in this fight. But we're looking pretty good. Now, Got right that. here at Oof. the end, second phase, we're going to see, you know, some shadow versions of some of our old boss friends. Take a hit there. That's all right. We'll make some of the next words a little bit easier. And that... <laughs> the chainsaw's okay. really hard. The chainsaw, without a doubt, as I was about to say, is the toughest one of all of these. Um, it, comes, it comes at you so fast. This guy, Zeal, super straightforward. The chainsaw guy, you really have to... Ah, I was trying be to on your best behavior. <laughs> it, you saw the difference. Yeah. You saw the difference. It's it's unbelievable. Um, so, okay. but now yeah. we also get a clearer view of how much easier the word get, words got because of the continuum in fight. True, true. Right. We're coming into the last phase here. He asks three questions. Three questions here. No time limit on them. This is Peaches following his heart, picking the answers to the questions that matter uh, the most to him. Time, deep by down. the way, that is time. Okay, yeah, so there's uh, three questions and three answers, and there's one correct answer and two incorrect answers. You don't really get feedback for what, which ones are right and which ones are wrong, but it'll impact your ending. So you get one ending if you get all three questions right, one if you get all three questions wrong, and one with a mix. And I don't really know what I'm going to get until a couple more seconds. They all start off like this. 
in time. So we'll find out again. Will come. Farewell, friends. Okay. There we go. Hopefully, no bungee cord, please. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah, let's go. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so this is what we affectionately call the bomb. <laughs> yes. Explodes. So. <laughs> All right, Burt Bros and Shambles, because that, that, okay, he, he could have fallen off the building, Bungie jumped up, and then landed back at the top of the building and belched, and for whatever reason, my stream loves that one, but I like the bomb. And just to, just to give you the final one, he also could have thrown his hands up in the air and farted into the stratosphere, and that is not a joke, that is the third ending of the game, so yeah. we did get the, uh, get the bomb ending. So we're here in the credits. Uh, you can type the credits to make zombies jump out and dance, but it's pretty long. So I feel like we could uh, just wrap it up and yeah. do some shout outs. Uh, just want to say shout outs to um, Bianca, John, Ian, and Kat, who might be watching back at home. Uh, thanks to my couch, Ellie, and also especially the incomparable Go to Quest. I Stop. thought he nailed it on the commentary. Stop. Stop. Check out this guy's stream. It's really Stop. good stuff. Enough. I love it. That's why I invited him here to help out. He did great. Thank you, Go to Quest. All right, my turn. Shout out to Peaches. In my first GDQ, I really, I don't have a speed running background. Um, I was invited here on, you know, uh, on a whim and just on trust. And obviously Peaches has a lot of pedigree here. And so bringing me along is a huge honor and I, I love it. And I'll hopefully be back. Um, just a personal shout out to Minky Moo. She's probably watching from India right now. My partner on a business trip. Um, if you're there, love ya. And huge shout out to everybody who donated to this event. Um, this is such, a, such an honor and such a big, very incredibly cool thing. Shout outs to Peaches, shout outs to Games Done Quick, and uh, the entire Peach P Chord <laughs> full of consistently great people and a, a great community. Absolutely. All right. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. And thanks to GDQ. Thank you.